So in this example, we are told we have a closed rigid tank containing a two-phase liquid vapor mixture of refrigerant R134A. Let's just go ahead and sketch that out. So here's our tank, and we have the R134A inside there. The R134A is going to be our system, and it's a closed rigid tank. The fact that it's closed means that the mass is a constant, and the fact that it's rigid means that the volume is a constant. So those two things together mean that the specific volume, which is the volume divided by the mass, will also be a constant. Okay, so that's something that we're going to make use of as we go through the problem, very likely. One other thing is since the volume is a constant, that also means that the work done by the system, this is PDV work, will be zero because the volume remains constant. So since the volume is a constant, there is no PDV work. It does say that uh, there is heat transfer into the tank. So let me go ahead and sketch that into my engineering flow diagram. So there's some Q into. That there is some heat transfer into the tank until the refrigerant's at a final pressure of 4 bar. We're also given the initial temperature. And we're also told that the initial quality is 50%. Since, since we're given that the quality is 50%, we know that that's consistent with being in a two-phase liquid vapor mixture. So we're asked to find what the final temperature of that system is, and uh, if the final state is in the superheated vapor region, at what temperature does the tank only contain saturated vapor, and then locate the initial and final states on a PV plot and show the process line, and then uh, indicate lines of constant temperature on the PV plot. So just a number of things that we have to do. So the first thing that we'll do is let's just nail down the properties at the initial state. So we're told at state one, which will be our initial state, we're told that the temperature is minus 20 degrees C. So T1 is minus 20 degrees C. We're also told the quality at one is 50%. So that would be 0 0.50. Now to find out what the pressure is at state one and the specific volume at state one, what we can do is take a look at the property tables for R134A, that's the refrigerant, and we'll look at the tables organized based on temperature since we're given a nice temperature here. So let's go do that. And again, we're dealing initially with the two-phase liquid vapor mixture. So we know we're in that saturated liquid vapor mixture, mixture state. So here's the table for R134A. And I've just copied it over from a separate file. And it's organized based on temperature. So we're dealing with 20 degrees C. So we're right there. So I know the pressure is going to be this pressure right here. That's the saturation pressure. So I know the pressure is 1.33 bar. That's an absolute pressure. And then to find the specific volume at that initial state, I know that I'm, I have a quality of 0.5. So I'm going to need to find out what the actual specific volume is. I'm going to need this saturated liquid specific volume and the saturated vapor specific volume. So I'm going to need those two numbers as well. Okay, so let's Remember those numbers, and then we'll go back and write them down up here. So I'll just say from SLVM table, just to indicate where it came from, I know the P1 is the pressure, the saturation pressure at T1, and that was the 1.3273 bar. That's, again, an absolute pressure. And I also know that the specific volume for the saturated liquid state at that T1 is given here. I'll just write that down. It's a lot of numbers to write down. But that's just the nature of dealing with properties. And then here's the saturated vapor specific volume at that temperature. That again comes from the table. Okay, so now to find the specific volume at state one, I'm going to make use of these saturated liquid and saturated vapor specific volumes and the quality. So specific volume at state one is going to be one minus the quality, state one times the saturated liquid specific volume plus the quality at state one times the saturated vapor specific volume. And so I can plug in the numbers for this and we'll get that the specific volume at state one is 0 0.074063 cubic meters per kilogram. So all I've done so far is just use the property tables to nail down what the conditions are 
at least at this initial state. So we've got the temperature, the pressure, and specific volume. Now the specific volume is one I'm particularly interested in because now I'm, I'm trying to ultimately find the final temperature, so this, at state two. So in order to find out what that, that temperature is at uh, state two, I need some information about state two. One piece of information that I'm given is the final pressure. So let's write that down. So state two, I know that P2 is four bar. But I need another property to nail down what the rest of the other properties are. So the other property that I know about state two is the fact that the specific volume remains constant because it's a rigid closed tank. So that means that the specific volume at state two is the same as the specific volume at state one. So that's the other piece of information I can use. So now I have two properties at state two and then I can go back to my tables and figure out what all the rest of the properties are. So let's go back to the tables and this time I'm going to look at the saturated liquid vapor mixture tables for R134A organized based on pressure since I'm given a nice uh, round, nice round number for pressure here, four bars. So let me go to that. So that was the table for the temperature, based on temperature. Here's the table based on pressure. So it's still the R134 table, R134A table, but now you can see it's organized based on pressure. And we're said, we're told that the pressure is at four bar right there. Okay, so we know that pressure and here's the specific volume for the saturated liquid state and here's the specific volume for the saturated vapor state right right here. Now we know that the specific volume at state 2 was equal to the 0 0.074063 cubic meters per kilogram. That's what we calculated previously. Now if I look at that number 0 0.07 you can see that it's larger than the saturated vapor specific volume. So what that means is that our our 134A is actually occupying more volume than what it would in the saturated vapor case. So that means that we're actually dealing with a superheated vapor in this final state. So let me just go back up there and go back up and make a note of that. So we know state one is actually in the saturated liquid vapor mixture phase, but since our specific volume for state two is larger than the saturated vapor specific volume, that must mean that we're in a superheated vapor phase for, for state two. So let's just make a note of that. Now to find out what the properties are then, we have to go to the superheated vapor tables. So again, remember four bar in that specific volume, and we'll go to the superheated vapor tables. So those are given down here. So these are the superheated vapor tables for the R134A. So we're going to look for the pressure of four bar. And we'll see if we can get the screen to move for me. Here we go. Okay. It's uh, kind of getting stuck on me. There we go. Okay. So if I look at this, here's the pressure of four bar. And we're looking, remember that our V2, our specific volume, state two was the 0 0.074063 cubic meters per kilogram. So when I look through these specific volumes over here, I'm looking for that value. And you'll see it goes somewhere between these two, between 100 and 110, right? It's between those two values. So I'm gonna to have to interpolate to find what the exact temperature is, but I know it's between 100 and 110. Okay, in fact, let me do that calculation right over here. So I hear what I'm going to do is just use linear interpolation. Okay, so T2 is going to be temperature at, uh, let's see, the, the lower value, 100 degrees C, plus how the temperature varies divided by how the specific volume varies. So this is the specific volume at 110 degrees C, minus the specific volume at 100 degrees C. So that's the slope. It's just how the specific volume varies with, res uh, how the temperature varies with respect to specific volume. And then I'll multiply it by my specific volume at state two, that's this number, minus the specific volume at 100 degrees C. So this is just a linear interpolation calculation. And if you use the values that are given right over here, 
and uh, what you'll end up getting is T2 comes out to be 103.5 degrees C or just you know just to round it off it's, it'll be 104 degrees C so that's our final temperature okay so let's let's just go back up there and write that down sorry for all the scrolling but it's unfortunately just the way it is so we found then that T2 was 104 degrees C so that's our first calculation part A okay so that was a matter of just finding the properties at state one and most importantly being the specific volume making use of the fact that the specific volume remains constant because we're dealing with a closed rigid container and that gave us our second property that we needed along with the given pressure to find the other properties for state two and that just uh, involves you know, finding properties using the tables. Okay, so then the next question is, if the final state is in the superheated vapor region, which it is, at what temperature does the tank contain only saturated vapor? Okay, so at what temperature does the tank contain only saturated vapor? Okay, so for that one, what we're going to do is we know that the specific volume, again, has to remain constant all the time. Right, so it always has to be this value. So since we're interested in saturated vapor, what I'm going to do is go to the saturated liquid vapor mixture tables and see when the saturated vapor specific volume equals this, vo this specific volume. Okay, so let's go to our pressure of 4 bar. Okay, so let's go. So here's our table. Uh, I'm sorry, this is, um, yeah, uh, I take it back. It's not, it's, we don't have to use the pressure of four bars, but it's just this table that we're going to refer to. And specifically, I'm interested in the saturated vapor specific volume. So it's going to be this column. And what I want to do is just go, go down through this column and see when my specific volume is equal to the 0.074063 cubic meters per kilogram. That's what I'm looking for is when do we match that. So I'm going through here and I see it's somewhere between these two values. Let me box those in. Somewhere between those two values which correspond to those two temperatures or those two pressures and these two temperatures. Okay so that's so I know that my temperature is somewhere in between those. Okay so I can go ahead and do some linear interpolation for that. So I can say the temperature, let's call this uh, state three. Okay, this is state three that we're interested in here. So that's gonna be the temperature that we start with at the, um, I'll just start with the minus 5.3653 degrees C. That's kind of the lower bound temperature, plus how the temperature varies. So that'd be minus 5.3653, so let me let me clean that up a little bit. 3653 degrees C minus the other temperature. That'd be a minus 1.2277 degrees C. And then divide through by the specific volumes corresponding to those. So this would be 0 0.083906 minus 0 0.072360 cubic meters per kilogram. And then multiplying it by V3 minus the lower bound specific volume, which is the 0 0.072360 cubic meters per kilogram. Okay, so the idea here again is just to do some linear interpolation. I know that my specific volume lies between those two values, and then I'm trying to find the correct temperature to correspond to that. And so this is the linear interpolation method that I'm using to find that. And when you do that calculation, you'll get that T3 comes out to be minus 1.80 degrees C. So that's the temperature we would have if the final state was in a saturated vapor state. Okay, so not superheated vapor, not a saturated liquid vapor mixture, but just saturated vapor only. Okay, so that would be the temperature. And of course, you could also do the linear interpolation to find the corresponding pressure. It would be the, the corresponding pressure would be the saturation pressure corresponding to that temperature. Okay. 
I use the table here organized according to pressure, but you could do the same idea up here using the table organized according to temperature. So here we could have done the same thing. We would look through this column to see where we're dealing with the proper um, the proper temperature. And again, that, I'm sorry, the proper specific volume. Specific volume, state three was the 074063. So that would be 07463. It would be somewhere between these two, which would correspond to the temperature between those two. And of course, the corresponding saturation pressures between those two. And we could do the same kind of linear interpolation. You'd get the same result. Okay, so that is our, I'll call it state three. This is the saturated vapor state. That occurs when the temperature is the minus 1.80 degrees C. Okay, so that again involves using the tables, specifically looking at saturated vapor and knowing that the specific volume remains a constant, it's that same specific volume. Let me make a note of that here. And some linear interpolation. Okay, so then the next thing that we're asked to do so we've, we've done that. So the next thing we're asked to do is locate the initial and final states on a PV plot and show the process line between them. So we'll just sketch that out here. These are just sketches, keep in mind, they're not terribly accurate, but they, they get the point across. So there's the vapor dome, and uh, we're starting at state one. State one, the temperature is minus 20 degrees C and the pressure is the 1.3273 bar. So that's gonna be somewhere down here. So this is the 1.3273 bar. That's that pressure. And then the corresponding isotherm uh, would look like this. So the isotherm would come down look like that. So this is the temperature is uh, the minus 20 degrees C and we have a quality of about 50% so I'm just going to just draw it there. So here's the specific volume at one. So here's our state one and then actually you know I'm going to move that off to the side just for to make the plot a little cleaner. So let's just draw it over here. So here's state one, there's the specific volume. Remember that specific volume is the same for all of the different cases. State two, uh, oh, and by the way, this is a saturated liquid vapor mixture phase, so it's there. Now state two, the temperature was higher, so we're gonna be at, a, uh, so the temperature is right there and uh, the pressure is higher, so we're gonna be further up on this plot. So let's just draw here, this is four bar, and draw the isotherm for that one, uh, actually I should draw it a little higher still, sorry I didn't, since I know that my, my, oops, I know that my phase for state two is actually in the superheated vapor region, I should probably draw this a little bit higher. Okay, so here's four bar. And so state two would be somewhere right about here, it's in line with that, it's in the superheated vapor region. And then the corresponding isotherm for state two would actually look something like this. So that temperature is the 104 degrees C. Notice that it's it's not in line here because it's this this 104 degrees C is not is not the saturation temperature at four bar because we're actually dealing with superheated vapor, it's a, it's a temperature that's higher than the saturation temperature. The saturation temperature for four bar we could find, if I just go down here into my table, if I look at four bar, that saturation temperature for four bar is about 8.9 uh, degrees Celsius, right? So if I go back up here, so this, let me just sketch that one in here, this line, right there, that temperature would be, so this is the saturation temperature at four bar, would be the 8.9 degrees C, you know, with some additional decimal points on it, okay? As far as the process, it, uh, it would, it's just going vertically upward. 
right? Because we're starting from state one, maintaining a constant specific volume, going up to state two there. This point, we're at, right where it crosses the saturated vapor line, that's our state three. In that temperature, was, sorry, it's all getting jammed up in there. That's the minus 1.8. Let me erase this one because it's getting a little too jammed up in there. So that temperature for state three was the minus 1.8 degrees Celsius case. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. We're starting at state one, which was a saturated liquid vapor mixture. We're staying at constant specific volume as we move up to state two. State two was a superheated vapor. There's the isotherm corresponding to that one. State three is this line. I'm going to just redraw it in blue, just make it a little bit cleaner. That's when that's the case when we're at a saturated uh, saturated vapor case. So that point right there at state three is saturated vapor. So we're right on the edge of the the vapor dome right there. Okay, so hopefully all that makes sense. Um, it gets a little messy in trying to sketch these things out, but hopefully it all makes sense to you. So we'll end the example there.